With spring trading finally underway, I felt like it was a good time for me to drop my best prospect from every team video. That way, when you guys are watching spring training games this year, you can keep an eye out for the young players that could be the next star on your favorite team or your least favorite team. I don't know. There's just a lot of good prospects. I love talking about them, so that's what I'm doing today. Drop a like on the video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel to keep supporting the channel. And follow me on all my social media at GiraffeNeckMark. Links in description. Let's get going into these prospects. Getting today's video started, the best prospect for the Houston Astros is Luis Baez. Baez, 20-year-old outfielder for the Astros got up to a ball last year as a 19 year old and displayed some impressive power in 58 games 11 homers 15 doubles 38 RBIs with a 357 average 481 slugging gave an OPS of 838 on the season he did dominate rookie ball struggle a little bit more at high a but he has all the tools that could turn into a perennial power hitting outfielder for the Astros one day especially with that right-handed swing while he isn't the greatest of athletes what you see there is that bat and it could be special from Luis Baez next up is the Philadelphia Phillies and their best prospect is Andrew Painter Painter will miss the entire 2024 season after getting Tommy John surgery, and he did not pitch last year trying to avoid Tommy John. That being said, he's absolutely disgusting. His fastball is electric, can touch the upper 90s. He's got a really solid curveball with a nasty slider. Great control. He was a guy who was probably going to be in the Phillies rotation last year if he didn't get hurt, and definitely would have been this year. But the injury is pushing his timetable to the majors back a little bit. As long as he's healthy, Andrew Painter can be a very, very good pitcher in Major League Baseball. Dude's six foot seven, and he's a freak. For the Los Angeles Angels, their best prospect is Nolan Shanuel. Shanuel? I don't know how to say his name yet. I've heard it said so many different ways. Just gonna call him Nolan the rest of the video. Nolan last year, first round pick in the 2023 draft, actually got called up by the Angels late in the season. Played in 29 games at 275 with a 402 on base, 330 slugging, and 732 OPS. For an OPS plus at 103, that's kind of what you can expect from him. He's not gonna give you huge power numbers, but he has the ability to get on base at an extremely high rate. Pretty good bat to ball skills, so should have a decently high average, and that will end up giving him a pretty good OPS. He just never seems like he's going to be a power guy. But getting to the majors in the same season you got drafted, yeah, it's pretty disgusting. So Shanuel, someone to keep an eye out for on the Angels this upcoming season. Keep it on the West Coast with the San Francisco Giants. Their best prospect, in my opinion, is Bryce Eldridge. I am a huge Bryce Eldridge fan. This guy could be a two-way player. Last year, he did only hit for the Giants in the minors, and he did crush it. But he does have the ability to pitch as well. Sweet left-handed swing. The dude's six foot seven, just a massive human being at 19 years of age. And like I said, dominated the minors last year. As an 18-year-old, got up to A ball at the end of the season. Six homers, five doubles, 18 RBIs, hitting 294 with a 400 on base, 505 slugging, and a 905 OPS. He was one of my favorite prospects out of the entire draft last year. And with a smart organization like the Giants, I think that they can get a lot out of this absolute behemoth of a human because the power potential is crazy. For the Atlanta Braves, their best prospect has to be Hurston Waldrop. Waldrop's going to get to the major league level maybe by opening day. At some point in the 2024 season, for sure, this guy is absolutely disgusting. Disgusting. I don't know how he fell to them in the draft at 24. He was great at Florida. The stuff is incredible. And the Braves got an absolute steal at the 24th overall pick last year. Waldrop got all the way up to AAA last season, where he did pitch four innings. As a whole, 29 innings in the minors, a 1.53 ERA, striking out 30% of the batters he faced, barely walking anybody, barely giving up any hits. I think he only gave up one home run in those 30 innings. After a really solid season at Florida his senior year, Hurston Waldrop has crazy high ceiling, a guy who could be a future ace for the Braves, and it pains me because God, I hate the Braves so much, but Hurston Waldrop's a stud. Colorado Rockies building a decent little farm system, and the top guy right now for them is going to be Adele Amador. Amador had a great season in 2023, getting all the way up to double A as a 22-year-old. While there are still some questions whether or not he'll be a shortstop or a second baseman moving forward, he did play mostly shortstop last year. 12 homers, 15 doubles, 46 RBIs, stealing 15 bases, hitting 287 with a 380 on base, 495 slugging, and an 875 OPS. The dude doesn't strike out at all. He walked more than he struck out last season, a K rate under under 10%, by the way, like what? Or right around 10%. He has all the tools to be a major league player and someone that the Rockies should be excited for because he's a really solid athlete and a really good hitter. It's just about finding position now. For the Los Angeles Dodgers, a little bit of a weaker farm system right now, but they still have talent at the top and their number one guy is going to be Dalton Rushing, in my opinion. Now, rushing is a bit of a project behind the plate, still learning how to truly be a catcher, but he has a cannon of an arm, which allows him to stay behind the plate at that position, and he's a really good hitter. He's just a very good player. Rushing was taken in the second round of the 2022 draft out of University of Louisville, and last year he spent the entire year at high A, 15 homers, 18 doubles, 53 RBIs, hitting 228, which doesn't sound great, but he did have a 404 on base, 452 slugging for an 856 OPS. It's kind of a battle between him and Diego Cartier right now as to who's going to be the next Dodgers catcher, and while rushing has probably a little more work to do behind the plate. I think offensively, just posting a 400 on base percentage at any level is super impressive, and he does have really good pop in that bat. Next up, we've got the Chicago White Sox, and their top prospect 
is clearly going to be Colson Montgomery. Number nine on Pipeline's top 100 prospects for the 2024 season. Montgomery's a big kid, six foot three, 205, with a beautiful left-handed swing. While he hasn't shown the crazy power yet, the potential there is just immense. He's drawing comparisons to Corey Seager based on his left-handed hitting, size, and frame. Last year got all the way up to double A as a 21-year-old. Eight homers, 14 doubles, three triples, and 37 RBIs, hitting 287 with a 456 on base, 484 slugging, and a 940 OPS. Walked as many times as he struck out. Again, good bat to ball skills, good power, average shortstop probably, maybe moves to third base at some point. But that command of the strike zone and ability to still be a productive hitter at the plate, not just only looking for walks, that's what makes Colson Montgomery one of the top prospects in the entire game. For my favorite team, the New York Mets, their number one prospect, Jet Williams. Jet Williams, tiny guy, short king, five foot six, taken 14th overall in the 2022 MLB draft out of high school. He has been impressive every single place he's ever been. Last year, got up to double A as a 19 year old, 121 games in total, 13 homers, 22 doubles, eight triples, and 55 RBIs with 45 stolen bases, being caught only seven times, hitting 263 with a 425 on base, 451 slugging for an 876 OPS, walked over 100 times last season. Like, Jet Williams is sick. He's disgusting. I feel like everyone likes to throw out the Altuve comp because he was another short king who's just a great player, and I kind of get it. Williams doesn't really strike out much, gets on base, hits the ball hard, might be more of a shortstop or center fielder rather than a second baseman like Altuve, but still, this short king is a stud. Can't wait to see what he can do this upcoming season. For the Pittsburgh Pirates, it's really easy. Their number one prospect, Paul Skeens. You know about Paul Skeens, number one pick in the draft last season. Livy Dunn's boyfriend, throws 100 miles an hour, disgusting stuff. Maybe he gets to the majors as soon as opening day. I don't know. This guy's so good. The Pirates could have called him up last year. He only pitched six innings in the minors last year, and the numbers are like whatever, but the stuff with Paul Skeens is what makes you excited, and the fact they still struck out like 30% of the batters he faced in those six innings proves that it wasn't just a fluke at LSU. Best prospect on the Toronto Blue Jays has to be Ricky Tiedemann. Now, he only threw 44 innings last year. The guy's been battling injuries ever since he's been drafted, but in those 44 innings, he struck out 82 of the 186 batters he faced. Disgusting. Didn't really walk that many guys, didn't give up many hits, only gave up one home run in those 44 innings, and then he went to the Fall League and dominated the Fall League. 2.5 ERA in 18 innings. Same thing, striking out 30% of the batters he faced, basically. Tiedemann's a guy who could come up for the Blue Jays this year and be a difference maker, a really good left-handed pitcher with three solid pitches of fastball slider and changeup. The third round pick from the 2021 MLB draft could be making a huge impact for the Blue Jays this upcoming season. Next up, I've got the Cleveland Guardians and their best prospect without a doubt is Chase DeLauder. This was my favorite player out of the 2022 MLB draft. Loved Chase DeLauder. I couldn't understand why he dropped. I know there were some injury concerns, but now you're starting to see why. Last year in 57 games, five homers, 22 doubles, 39 RBIs, hitting 355 with a 417 on base, 528 slugging and a 945 OPS. Those were his numbers from rookie ball all the way to double A last year. He went to the fall league, continued to dominate five homers and five doubles in 23 games with a 914 OPS. He walked more than he struck out in the fall league. A guy who doesn't swing and miss, like he rarely does it. And he's got some more pop that can even get taken out of that bat. Playing a premium position in the outfield. Sick athlete. Chase DeLauder is one of my favorite prospects in the entire game. Shout out Fuzzy, you got a star in the making here. Miami Marlins farm system is terrible. But one guy who is not, Noble Meyer. By far their best prospect right now. Meyer was the 10th overall pick in the draft last season. He only threw 11 innings. In those 11 innings, 15 strikeouts out of the 51 batters he faced. Got him to A ball as an 18 year old. There's a lot to work work on with Noble Meyer. Again, he's 19 years old now. He's 6'5", 185, so there are things to clean up. But he's got a fastball that peaks at like 100 miles an hour. A slider that has really, really good spin and is in the mid to high 80s. Working on that third pitch is going to be the big difference for him right now. That's going to be the changeup. But if the Marlins can continue to develop pitching like we've seen with some of these other players, Noble Meyer could be part of that next group of great pitchers in Miami. Best prospect for the Arizona Dimebacks, in my opinion, is going to be Jordan Lawler. So I'm in my top 10 prospects video. He's a guy who looks like he could be like a Bobby Witt Jr. comp a little bit. Very good shortstop, all-around good player. He did get called up to the majors last year, struggled, but also was a part of that World Series run, so he got some more experience. 20 homers, 23 doubles, 67 RBIs with 36 stolen bases between AA and AAA last year as a 20-year-old. Finished with a 378 on base, almost 500 slugging for an 874 OPS. There's really nothing not to like about Jordan Lawler. Like, he's just super good. And again, the Diamondbacks. Can't believe he fell all the way to six in that draft in 2021. This guy could have been the number one overall pick, debatably. For the Tampa Bay Rays, their best prospect is going to be Junior Caminero. Caminero came up as a 19-year-old to the major leagues last year to some okay success, like he did hit his first home run, but really, he spent most of the year in the minors, and he dominated. Going from high A all the way to the majors, but in the minors, he was high A and double A. 31 homers, 18 doubles, 94 RBIs, a 324 average, 384 on base, 591 slugging for a 976 OPS. Crazy exit velos, just an absolute 
absolute beast at the plate. He's going to be a fun player to watch this year in Tampa. Next up, we've got one of the most exciting young prospects we've seen in a while. That's going to be Ethan Salas of the San Diego Padres. Salas last year made his debut as a 16-year-old in the minors. He's playing at A-ball as a 16-year-old. Like, that's crazy. He finished the year, like, as a 17-year-old. Got all the way up to double-A. He did struggle a bit, but in 66 games as a 16- and 17-year-old last year in the minors, nine homers, 13 doubles, two triples, and 41 RBIs, hitting 248 with a 331 on base, 421 slugging, and 752 OPS. Salas is top 10 in most people's prospects list going into the season. He projects as a guy who could be a 25-plus home run guy in his prime in the majors, and he's a really good catcher behind the plate. The reviews have been great. So we'll see how aggressive the Padres are with him. Like, I don't expect him to be called up this year or even next year, but a 17-year-old making this much noise this early in his career, you know there's something special there. Best prospect for the Texas Rangers, in my opinion, is going to be Evan Carter. It's probably Wyatt Langford because Evan Carter is going to graduate within like a week of playing this year. But right now, technically, it's still is Evan Carter for me. You guys saw him in the World Series. You saw him at the end of the year. He was a difference maker for that Rangers lineup and that team. He's just so good. Plate discipline, elite, has pop in that bat, plays a good outfield, good base runner. There's not really anything that Evan Carter doesn't do well. And again, he has that elite eye at the plate. The guy never chases, doesn't swing at bad pitches, always makes good contact. He was hitting the middle of the order for the World Series champion Rangers as a 20-year-old. Need I say more? For the Baltimore Orioles, they have the best prospect in baseball right now, and that's going to be Jackson Holiday. Keep it out for Samuel Basayo. He's going to be the next big name that you hear come out of that organization, but as of right now, until Holiday graduates from the prospect status, he's going to be the number one guy. Jackson Holiday, son of Matt Holiday, number one overall pick back in 2022. He's disgusting. As a 19-year-old, got up to AAA last year. While we haven't seen the crazy power potential yet, uh, he's still 19 years old, and he's not the biggest of dudes. Like He's only six feet tall. I'm saying only. I wish I was six feet tall as a 5'9 guy, but let me just tell you the stats because they're crazy. He also plays a good shortstop, by the way. 12 homers, 30 doubles, 9 triples, 75 RBI, stealing 24 bases, hitting 323 with a 442 on base, 499 slugging, and a 941 OPS as a 19-year-old. He might just be the opening day shortstop for the Orioles this year. We shall see how he does in spring training. That will dictate what happens. But sooner or later, this season, Jackson Holiday will be playing for the Orioles at the major league level. Best prospect for the Chicago Cubs, in my opinion, former Met, Pete Crow Armstrong. Oh, it hurts. I'm a little bit lower on Pete Crow Armstrong than I was going into last year. I think there's some things in his game that have been exposed a little bit that he needs to improve upon, particularly that swing and miss and chase. But Pete Crow Armstrong is still a really really talented player, a great athlete, and he's 22 years old. He's going to be great for the Cubs. Last year in the minors between AA and AAA, eventually did get the call up, but struggled, did not get a hit in his major league career yet. 20 homers, 26 doubles, 7 triples, 82 RBI, stealing 37 bases, hitting 283 with a 365 on base, 511 slugging, and 876 OPS. He's really good. There's nothing else to say about Pico Armstrong. Good athlete, talented player. If he can just cut down on the whiffs, cut down on the Ks a little bit, he could be really special. Best prospect for the Oakland A's, I gotta go with Jacob Wilson, son of Jack Wilson, former major leaguer for the Pirates. Wilson was a sixth overall pick in last year's draft out of Grand Canyon University, and the thing that I love about Jacob Wilson is, one, really good ball player, two, this is someone who we have seen get better and better every single season he has played. As he's getting older, as he's maturing, the play just continues to improve. It's kind of crazy. And last year in 26 games, eventually got to high A with the A's, which was nice. While we haven't seen a lot of power out of him, only one home run, did have 11 doubles, 13 RBIs, and he hit 333 with a 391 on base, 475 slugging, and an 866 OPS. Struck out about 10% of the time in the minor leagues is great. Walked enough to be productive. Plays a good shortstop. Maybe he eventually becomes a second baseman or third baseman. But he has the hit tool and just the entire makeup to be a really good player as long as the A's don't F this one up like they normally do. Jacob Wilson's just a really solid player. Someone you can rely on. For the Milwaukee Brewers, it's easy. It's Jackson Chorio. He just got paid. He's going to be probably the starting center fielder, left fielder, right fielder for the Brewers this season on opening day. And for good reason, the 19-year-old has dominated at every single level he's ever been at. Got all the way up to AAA last year, but spent most of it in AA. 22 homers, 26 doubles, 91 RBI, stealing 44 bases, hitting 283 with a 338 on base, 467 slugging and an 805 OPS. Incredible athlete, great in the outfield, shown some pop in that bat. Really interested to see what Chorio can do at the major league level this year. The best prospect on the Washington Nationals, it's gotta be Dylan Cruz. Cruz, number two overall pick by the Nats in last year's draft, could have been number one, was a standout player at LSU, and with the Nats, did really well. 35 games, got to double A. That's actually where he played the majority of his games. Five homers, nine doubles, 29 RBIs, hitting 292 with a 377 on base, 467 slugging, and an 845 OPS. He's a five-tool player, a guy you should see at the major league level very soon. I don't think he's ever going to be a 30 home run guy, but all around really good at what he does. Again, he dominated at LSU. 
Excited to see what he can do this upcoming year in the minors, maybe even at the majors for the Nationals. Could be a franchise player. For the Detroit Tigers, their best prospect's gotta be Jackson Job. I'm picking him over Cole Keith. I like Job a little bit more. I've always been a Job guy, loved him in the draft back in 2021. And while he really hasn't been able to stay healthy just yet, when he has been healthy, he's been disgusting. In 64 innings last year, a 2.81 ERA between rookie ball and double A, struck out 84 of the 258 batters he faced, had a whip under one, didn't walk anybody. Like, that's what's incredible. 84 strikeouts, six walks. Disgusting from a 20-year-old. And he did really well in the Fall League as well, striking out 19 of the 67 batters he faced as a 20-year-old in the Fall League, being one of the youngest players there. So I know I always say pitching prospects are fake, but Job's a guy that I've always loved because he has a great fastball and one of the best sliders in just all of baseball, period. Hope he stays healthy for this upcoming season. He could be a future ace for the Tigers. The best prospect on the Mariners was tough. That farm system is absolutely loaded. I could rattle off five guys that I love right now that aren't the best one. Lazaro Montes, Colt Emerson, Harry Ford, Felin Celestine, Jonathan Classe, a lot of good players. But the best one is going to be Cole Young. Cole Young was the 21st overall pick in the 2022 MLB draft out of high school in Pennsylvania. Not typically where you find a lot of talent, but whoa, did the Mariners find a great one. As a 19-year-old last year, got up to high A, 126 games, 11 homers, 34 doubles, 9 triples, 62 RBIs with 22 stolen bases, hitting 277 with a 399 on base, 449 slugging, and an 848 OPS. Walked almost as much as he struck out. He's like a top 50 prospect consensus in all of baseball through all the publications. He's going to play shortstop. Where Worst case scenario, he becomes a really good second baseman, and he just has great bat-to-ball skills, a great control of the strike zone. Still a really good player. That's it. That's all I have to say about him. Cole Young's great. He's not, like, cool or fun like Lazaro Montes, who's probably my favorite prospect in baseball right now, but he's really good. Feels weird to say this for the Yankees, but their best prospect is Jason Dominguez. Really impressed with what he did at the Major League level last year. Obviously, we've been hearing the hype on the Martian for, I mean, it feels like five years now. But in the eight games last season, four homers in eight games at the Major League level as a 20-year-old. After posting pretty good numbers in AA and AAA last year, finished with an 802 OPS on the season. Crazy good athlete. There's some pop in that bat, and he's really strong. He's going to miss most of the season because of Tommy John surgery, but he should come back in the late summer and could be a difference maker for the Yankees this year year, especially if he keeps that power up like he did in 2023. For the Boston Red Sox, their best prospect, Roman Anthony. I have Roman Anthony as one of the 10 best prospects in all of baseball, maybe a little aggressive, but I was super excited with what I saw last year. Anthony went from low A all the way to double A and got better as he went higher in the organization. It doesn't make any sense, but he put his best numbers up at high A and double A. 106 games last year, 14 homers, 27 doubles, 64 RBIs with 16 stolen bases, hitting 272 with a 403 on base, 466 slugging and an 869 OPS. Now there is some swing and miss in his game that is a little bit concerning but he does have a great eye at the plate. He has a lot of pop. He is a good athlete, plays a good outfield. Roman Anthony could be a cornerstone of this Red Sox organization in the near future. And he's still so young. He doesn't turn 20 until May. What? Top 10 prospect in the game for sure, and the best in the Red Sox organization, no doubt. Best prospect in the Cardinals organization right now has got to be Mason Wynn. While we saw him struggle mightily at the major league level last year, it was on a weird Cardinals team that wasn't competitive. Otherwise, at AAA, he was great. 18 homers, 15 doubles, 7 triples, and 61 RBIs, stealing 17 bases, hitting 288 with a 359 on base, 474 slugging, 834 OPS. Now, I don't know what power potential we see out of a guy like Mason Wynn, but he's going to play a great shortstop, has a cannon of an arm, can throw like 100 miles an hour from the position. He's not going to swing and miss a lot. Lot, not going to strike out a lot. Big contact guy. Pretty good discipline at the plate. He's a very capable major league shortstop. And he's still only 21, 22 years old. So there's a lot of development left in Mason Wynn. So don't take the bad 120 at-bats as a sign that he's going to be a bust. That would just be crazy. He's too talented. Next up, we've got the Minnesota Twins, and their best prospect is another top 10 guy, in my opinion. That's going to be Walker Jenkins. Jenkins, fifth round pick out of the MLB draft last season as a high schooler out of North Carolina. And in the 26 games, put up great numbers. I mean, he's also a monster of a human. He's 19 years old, and he's 6'3", 210. Like, my God. It's huge. 26 games, three homers, five doubles, four triples, 22 RBIs with six stolen bases, hitting 362 with a 417 on base, 571 slugging, 989 OPS. He did play a lot of center field. He is a good athlete. I don't know if he's going to be able to stick there because of his size and just how strong he is, but keep running him out there as long as you can. The bat is what you're excited about with Walker Jenkins, one of the nicest left-handed swings I've seen in a long time. Guy just hits tanks. Penultimate team up here, the Cincinnati Reds, and their best prospect is going to be Noel V. Marte. Now, Marte is going to graduate off this very quickly because he should be on the open 
opening day roster for the Reds this season. Was really good last year in 35 games for them. Three homers, seven doubles, 15 RBIs, hitting 316 with a 366 on base, 456 slug, and 822 OPS for an OPS plus at 120. He's been a guy who's been hyped up for a while. He gained a lot of notoriety as a prospect in Seattle, was part of the Luis Castillo trade, and he's just pretty much mashed at every single level. Big, strong kid. He could do really well in Cincinnati this year. And then last but certainly not least, we've got the Kansas City Royals' best prospect, and that's going to be Blake Mitchell. Mitchell was their first round pick last year, eighth overall. He's a catcher with a cannon of an arm. He did struggle in the minors. There's not much to say in the 13 games. wasn't great, but what we saw of him as a high school prospect playing in Texas, you're excited about him in what is a relatively weak Royals farm system right now. But Blake Mitchell was a guy that people were really high on, considered to be one of the best catchers in the draft last year, and apparently has a really good bat. So there they are, the best prospects from every team in Major League Baseball for the 2024 season. I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Is there someone I'm sleeping on? Is there someone that's overrated? I'd love to know what you're thinking. Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it, as well as subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the content coming at you all baseball season long. Follow me on my social media, Giraffe Mark. Links are in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. You know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video. This is my most recent and upload so click through those if you have not yet seen them thank you guys so much and i'll catch you all tomorrow for another video or whenever i upload again bye